I drew a lot and I did a lot of drafting as a young person. I was actually working as a draftsman and I was driving a school bus part time and on weekends I'd wash the buses and then after I would wash one, this dude would come and hand letter the names, whatever township it was going to be for. And I was just so amazed. I'd never seen anything like that. And I just, it just really clicked to me. I thought, I can do that. My name is Phil Vandervart. I'm a sign painter, known as Sign Painter Phil. I do a lot of bartering. So I said, I'll paint your sign for free coffee for life. And 23 years later, it continues. So that'll end when I, I'm dead. Well, this coffee is great. I figure this might be my 10,000th cup. <laughs> I grew up in a somewhat of an engineering family. We came from Europe. I was born in Holland. Not only am I an immigrant, I came on a boat. This is the Cedar Cultural Center, kind of a good outfit. It's in an old theater, and they uh, have international music from all, all over the world, which is what international music is, I suppose. Once I started to paint signs on the West Bank, that sort of escalated me into uh, you know, being known, in a sense, because I did so many signs in a small area. I kind of found my community in a sense. Being kind of an outcast myself, I found a neighborhood of outcasts. This is the infamous Palmer's Bar. This job was originally done in 1968. I've repainted it actually twice. When I repainted it last time, I put this mug up there. So that's my contribution to the sign. And I figured since he's 40 years old, I gave him a pot belly. That's my contribution too. <laughs> West Bank will always remain dear to my heart as part of my as part of my story, really. I have all these pictures. Well, I've been doing it for 35 years. Earlier in my life, I was a naval photographer. I went to the Naval School of Photography. It's always been a big hobby of mine, but I've never able to turn it into a living. But I recorded what I did. So most of it's just my storefronts, and a lot of it is people's logos that they give you and you just paint on there. It just has to be clear. It just has, you know, the whole thing about signs will put you on the map, and that's the whole point of it. People have to remember to sign for the place that it is. So that's what I hope I've achieved through all this. You know, I, I, I get a real good vibe from playing a harmonica. I try to set up a good vibe within myself, and then I try to transfer that vibe into my painting. I have this little compound here. Signs I used as the walls in this shed, in particular, are from the Mighty Ducks movie of 25 years ago and some TV commercials, so I actually painted these signs they were used in the film, and then I got them back and used them as a building commodity. People like hand-painted signs, and there's a resurgence of interest. If you have an old sign and it's, and it's no, no longer relevant, you, you can put it in your house or your shop, and it's wall art. If you have an old vinyl sign, it's garbage. This year, I'm doing a bunch of signs for the Renaissance Fair. I've done it before. Because it's the Renaissance Fair, they have Renaissance lettering. And then I'm just going to do Old English. That's based on the old Arabic hand movement. You have a, a quill, and you go this way, and it's thick, and you go that way, it's thin. And it's just based on your hand stroke.
Painting science is more work than it, it looks, and maybe I make it that way because I put so much thought into it, but when I finally get it done, I consider like half of it a function for the business and the other half sort of public art. And I want it to be really visual. I do want my signs to be like a living history of the city. I'm happy to finally be doing signs in my own neighborhood. I've worked all over Minneapolis. I work a lot in St. Paul. There's a lot of different focuses to sign painting. For me in particular, uh, these ma and pa shops, brick and mortar, those I feel are my people. I hope that they do well in their business so that they're, they continue to be here. The fonts I use is the old style, you know, the, the 20s and the 30s and just block lettering, but you know, really classy looking. To reflect the building, you know, try to make it as classy looking as you can. Today we're going to put up that pattern. We put the pattern up first, that shows us the denotations of the banner. At what points we will then paint the banner, so we'll base coat it in a field gray, then do the f fading and the blending. That's for you. Forrest, my stealthy assistant, which is phenomenal on many levels, he's already been 15 years in the trade, who's kind of turned into a partner. Phil's work is so archetypal in the Minneapolis landscape that it's probably at times taken for granted. Phil taught me to draft and to draw and to deliberate before I begin my project and to utilize the tried and true methods. I've read a lot of old books on sign painting and that's one guy, it was somewhere in the 1800s and he was, he was saying in the book about when he paints, he had a screen around him so nobody could even see what he's doing like painting on this window. And he said, yeah, I don't want to show anybody how to do it. Why should I raise chickens so they can pick out my eyes? That was his comment in the book. I'm thinking, oh, I don't know. I'm glad that people didn't feel that way about me because people showed me. So yeah, I think it's a part of it. I think if you know something, it's your responsibility to, to teach it. I remember the first sign I painted on my own was, uh, was a gas stop, and it was just like magic in a way, and it, it was an incredible feeling. It was actually a physical high. That was really a, a, an addictive thing for me, so that helped me really get into it, and I hope that these young people feel that. It, it, it can be really rewarding. Mm -hmm. 